Greetings everyone and welcome to another episode of my Flutter web tutorial series. Today we will have a look at how to quickly and easily add slide and fade animations to a list of bullet points using the slide transition and fade transition widgets. So after this video you will have the right tools to add simple easy to implement slide and fade animations to your Flutter application and give it a certain something. So make sure to stay tuned and enjoy the video. Before we start I wanted to give a quick shout out to Joao Suarez and his take on the slide transition and fade transition widgets inspiring me to use these two widgets for my website and adapt my code accordingly. I have put a link to his video and his github code in the description so make sure to check it out as well. So let's have a look first at how our page currently looks like. We have these bullet points here on the right which we want to animate once we open the about page. You can see that essentially each bullet point has its own slide and fade animation, each one slightly being delayed. If we have a look at our about view file, we can see that here in our desktop view we are creating a bullet list with currently four placeholder strings representing the text of each bullet point. A bullet list essentially consists of a list of bullet points and spacers following each other. This list is generated based on the strings we are receiving. We are creating a bullet point in the first iteration and then on the next iteration a spacer and so on and so forth. Each bullet point we create consists of a circle in the beginning represented by this char code and the text we are giving it. So now before we start adding any animation we need an animation controller in our bullet list class essentially taking care of starting our animation and being the regulating controlling instance above each animation. In our init state method, we want to initialize our animation controller by providing it with a ticker provider, which will be the state class using the with single ticker provider state mixin, and by providing it with a duration of how long our animation should play. For now, we simply set it to one second. Since we want to have the animation played every time our about page is open and our bullet point list created, we also want to call the forward method of our animation controller in the init state method, starting the animation sequence. With our animation controller set up, we now want to add specific animations to our bullet points. Remember, each bullet point has a slide and fade animation. To be able to perform these animations, we first have to pass our animation controller to the bullet point class. Create a required class member for this and then pass it over in our bullet list class. Now let's add the fade animation first. For this simply wrap our row with a fade transition widget and set its opacity to being our animation controller. If we restart the page we can see that now each bullet point is properly fading in. To add the slide animation, wrap the fade transition widget with a slide transition widget. Now we need to add a position value to know where our slide animation starts and where it ends. For this we are creating a tween of offsets. An offset consists of a horizontal and vertical value. So here our initial offset is slightly to the right of our current position and the end value then includes no offset at all. So with the help of the tween we are now animating between these two offsets and thus creating the effect of a sliding motion. To actually be able to animate we then need to call the animate method and give it our animation controller. We start the page and see how it looks. So there's two things bothering me. 
First, I'd like the animation to not instantly play once the page is opened, just to make sure I've got enough time to fully grasp the animation plate. And second, it would be much cooler if the bullet points weren't sliding in all at once, but have this slight delay one after the other. So let's make some quick adjustments. First, let's go to the init state method of our bullet list and wrap our animation controller.forward method with a timer, delaying the start of our animation for a few hundred milliseconds. Now to the delay of the bullet points. Let's imagine our animation on a timeline starting from 0 and ending at 1. Currently all bullet points come at once. However, we'd like them to be a bit delayed but still overlapping. To achieve this we need to work with the interval class, allowing us to set a start and end point within the time frame of our animation. So in our example we'd like to have intervals looking like this for example. So let's go back to our bullet point class and do some adjustments. First, we need to replace the animation controller here with a curved animation. Its parent will be our animation controller and the curve will be an interval. This interval now needs a start value, an end value and a curve which we will be setting to curves.ease for now. How you set your start and end values now depends on the setup of your project. Since I'm using the bullet point class multiple times but still want these different intervals, I need to pass over the index of the current bullet point and calculate a start and end value dynamically. The only constraints you always have to watch out for are that your start and end values are between 0 and 1. So, with these values set, we can see that once we restart the page, the animations are running smoothly just as expected. Alright everyone, that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for stopping by. I hope this video was helpful to you and if there are any further uncertainties, feel free to write a comment or contact me and I'd be glad to help you out. Have a lovely day and see you next time.